Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the latest Backing Brentwood Business webinar. Uh, my name is Colin Barber. I'm chairman of Brentwood Chamber of Commerce, and it's my pleasure to bring you the webinar on behalf of Brentwood Chamber of Commerce, Brentwood Business Partnership and Brentwood Borough Council. Today's webinar is on the subject of present presenting online uh, with our experienced presenter, Robin Bailey from Capricorn Media, and we'll be introducing you to Robin very, very shortly. I'd like to welcome all of you along here this afternoon to our webinar, which is one of a series of webinars which we've been staging throughout the month uh, as a result of previously working together between Brentwood Borough Council, Brentwood Business Partnership and Brentwood Chamber of Commerce. Um, if you haven't caught all the videos so far, you will find that they are available on YouTube at the Brentwood Chamber of Commerce website and we will indeed be recording this afternoon's uh, webinar on YouTube. Just to explain to you also, there are a couple of buttons at the bottom of the screen which you can use. If you've got any questions which you'd like to ask Robin, then please do hit the Q&A button and I'm sure he'll be happy to help you. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Robin Bailey. Are you there, Robin? Yes, I'm here, Colin. Great, good to speak to you again, Robin. And uh, we're very much looking forward to your webinar this afternoon. But first of all, perhaps you could just tell us a very brief, a uh, little bit about Capricorn Media. Yes, of course. Um, Capricorn has been going uh, 16 years, always uh, based in uh, Brentwood, in this uh, house that I'm broadcasting from uh, today. Um, it started as a media training company, so I used to train uh, footballers, people like Gareth Bale, Theo Walcott, um, Adam Lalana, who's, who's now at Liverpool, people like that back in the day, and also a lot of other sports people, people who went to Olympics, people who went to Paralympics, um, golfers, um, lots and lots of sports covered, but then we adapted into training for business as well. So CEOs, financial directors, people who have to um, make presentations. So that was also um, a good area for, uh, for the business. And I also created um, within Capricorn a video production company as well. So we made corporate videos uh, to get your image, your branding right. Um, as well. So that's been going for a while, but it's now settled down. I'm now almost like a permanent trainer. I just train people in broadcast, in presenting, in all those kind of aspects. Um, and I also talk about presenting online, obviously, in the light of um, the lockdown. It's very relevant, Colin. Good. And you've obviously got a wealth of experience in broadcasting, uh, broadcasting history for the BBC and uh, sports broadcasting was your speciality, I understand. Yes, that's right. Sport, um, sport was my love and uh, I managed to actually, I, I never worked in my life because I was always working in sport. Um, at the BBC, uh, I joined the BBC in 1990 and uh, initially as producer and then I became a broadcaster. I worked on Five Live, um, Radio Five Live, Radio Four Today programme, Five Live Breakfast, Radio Two with Steve Wright. I used to work with Radio One. Um, uh, and I think the only channel I didn't do was Radio 3 back in the day. Then I moved into television in 1997 and I, I've kind of stuck with the television thing. My dad was in television, so it felt very much home to me. Mm. Um, and it's from those experiences of being interviewed and interviewing other people and seeing people crumble and seeing people um, really thrive that uh, I can do these kind of courses because it's all uh, based on my experience. Mm. And presumably what we're talking about today, a Zoom broadcasting, is very much just a mini version of a, a TV studio or a television broadcast. Of course it? it is. It's the same sort of size screen as well as your widescreen telly. It's exactly the same and you have to live by the same rules. Uh, and so a lot of those um, rules and presenter do's and don'ts are going to come up today, Colin. Okay, brilliant. All right, well, let's, um, let's hand straight over to you, Robin, and say... Uh, uh, look forward to hearing from you and uh, just to remind people if they do have any questions uh, during the presentation then do hit the Q&A button and I'll be asking you the questions at the end of your presentation so over to you Robin thank you yes um, it actually is quite it's interesting it's quite uh, nerve-wracking actually it's almost like being back at uh, the BBC where I uh, where I uh, presented TV bulletins for about uh, 15 years or something like that um, on the BBC news channel and uh, yeah, it's quite, uh, it's quite good. Good to get the old ad adrenaline going. Um, so the idea here is that you pick up a few tips. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that everything I say today, you won't have heard elsewhere. You probably learn uh, by trial and error yourself when you're working uh, maybe with clients, with potential clients, uh, with staff members, keeping in touch with, um, with, with friends, even the, the sort of 
common or garden pub quiz, that kind of thing. You know, you want to look your best at all times. You know, you are kind of on show. So uh, I think there'll be a lot of things, hopefully, that you'll learn today. But if you pick up one, two, three little nuggets that you can take forward, then frankly, I think my, my job will be, will be uh, done. So uh, what I'm going to do, just to map out how this is going to work, I, I'd like to leave sort of about 20 minutes at the end for uh, questions, if at all possible. So what I've done is I've created a video with slides, which I'm going to talk over uh, for about 15 to 20 minutes, something like that, which will have all the theory and I'll obviously, you know, that there'll be a lot of presenters do's and don'ts in there as well. So we can pick up on any of those themes afterwards. And uh, as Colin said, you'll have the opportunity to do that. So please put those questions in. I probably won't get involved in um, responding to chat or anything while, while the presentation's on, but obviously we can visit all that uh, at the end and uh, Colin hopefully will, uh, will collate uh, the, the questions. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna um, share my screen and I'm gonna go to, uh, the start of the, the video. So here we go. Right, you should all be seeing that. Um, Colin, just nod if you've, uh, you've got that in your screen. Lovely, okay, good. Okay, so let's get this going then. So I start with this, the law of communication. I talk about this with um, with my media training clients as well. Um, but it's all the same. It's about how we communicate with each other. So this is uh, the pie chart that I always show. It's actually created by a guy called Albert Morabian. The whole theory is a, an, an Iranian professor. And he came up with this theory. 93% of communication in the first instance is nonverbal. So only 7% of the actual words you're saying 55% are the body language, what you're doing with your face, your arms, yeah. um, and the 38% is the kind of tone that you're setting, the, the, the mood you're creating, the atmosphere you're creating. So if you get the blue and the red right, then it all comes down to the message and what you're actually saying, which we're not going to talk about today. We're just going to be talking about the first impression that you can make when you're obviously uh, de dealing with um, whoever it is, your clients, your friends, your um, colleagues. Just one slide here that's gone slightly wrong, it's zoomed. Uh, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. What's your impression of the guy on the right compared to the guy on the left? It's the same guy, but because they're dressed differently, because one looks like a professional doctor, the cut type who are kind of all um, doing so well uh, on all our behalves at the moment, and the guy on the right, completely different image. Tattoos, um, bald head, t-shirt, cut, cut, cut sleeves. What does that say about him? But it might be the wrong first impression. These are the keys to connection. These are the keys to connecting with your audience. And it all goes back to when uh, you have children, maybe. You, maybe you have grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and maybe when you were a child yourself, when you had that first connection with your parent and you smile for the first time. It's such a powerful thing that we keep that throughout our lives. So smile for the camera because it's engaging, the audience loves it. The guy in the middle is doing that, doing his own little webinar like we're doing here, but look smart, got the tie and, and the shirt. And there's Oprah Winfrey doing her Golden Globe speech where she showed her passion, her desire, her the fact that she loves what she's doing and that that, that you know you that that comes through and that's what I'd urge everyone to uh, uh, take a slice of that passion eye contact is also very important we're going to talk about eye contact I'm obviously looking at the screen now I'm not sure um, I think maybe on the recording but not on the live one you'll be able to see uh, me in the corner of the screen but I'm looking at you as my audience as you should and when you do that you it, it says good things like honest you're honest you're courteous, you're friendly. And most importantly for you in business, this is someone that I could work with. And isn't that the most important thing? I've used Beckham's eyes because they're probably the best in the business, but that's the whole feel of it. If people don't attract your gaze and look away, you think something else about them, don't you? You think, oh, they're a bit shifty. So let's talk about the vocal connection now, the, the connection that you have with uh, with with people through the kind of mood that you create. Now, 
this is very true of someone he's my hero Andy Murray this is uh, him in slightly younger days but he's never been the best communicator in the world he talks at that level and doesn't really vary very interesting guy very funny guy privately but has that that monotone uh, range one of the highlights of my BBC career has been um, reporting on his Wimbledon um, uh, win of 2016 at the bottom of the hill. I was live on radio, it was fantastic. But what you've got to do is match your passion with your delivery. And, and if you can do that, you can be successful. There was a, a note there about turning up the volume. If people can't hear you, uh, they're not going to actually get the message. So this goes on from the Andy Murray example. Monotone, people, you will put people to sleep, you will make them switch off if you don't engage. So on slides like this, if I was just talking like that and just, you know, a bit, with a very boring tone, you wouldn't really want to carry on listening. I'm trying to engage you with that dynamic tone. And the way I describe it is you put music in your voice, lots of light and shade, which really creates that uh, atmosphere that, yeah, you're an interesting person and you've got interesting stuff to say. And obviously, as a boss of your business or as a, as a member, you can do that. So I want to just um, uh, talk um, about avoiding distractions. This is something that is going to come up um, all the time. And most of the distractions are absolutely avoidable. And you just have to be aware of them. You have, just have to be aware of what's going on. So I'm gonna just map this out for you. I'm gonna talk about avoiding distractions and securing your workplace. Um, as I said, you may have seen earlier that I've got a door behind me. Now, I have made sure I'm secured that door. There are no grandchildren with me at the moment, uh, thankfully. Uh, they've, all, they've all gone back. Um, but the important thing is that I know that there's no one going to come through that door. But there are certain situations where that doesn't happen, and BBC News is joyous for that. Scandals happen all the time. The question is how did Mark just find the most scandals? Uh, and what will it mean for... Uh... For the wider region, I think one of your children has just brought in. I mean, shift is shifting, shifting. Do you think relations with the North may change? Now, um, being honest, you didn't really listen to anything he was saying anyway. As soon as that uh, child came in, a massive distraction. It's a, look, an extreme version of what can go wrong when you haven't secured the background. So just make sure that you do that. But they became kind of in internet stars. I think they had the family on the show, um, uh, you know, uh, the foursome uh, the next day. But this happens on, on BBC television all the time. You know, ITV and all the other channels as well, but it just so happens that because I come from a BBC background, I tend to watch that uh, a little bit more. There are distractions at home as well, and uh, I want you to have a look at this one. This is something that could happen. Um, could it happen in your house, do you think? No, surely not. <laughs> Now, part of me thought when that happened that there was actually a bit of staging going on. And, and you, you can never be sure when stuff's on the Internet, the fact that he bashes and then comes back. I don't know. But that's the kind of thing that can that can go wrong if uh, if your um, if your partner or children, uh, grandchildren, whoever it is, aren't aware that you're actually um, busy, you're working. And uh, this is a work environment. You know, this is this has become a work environment during this uh, uh, lockdown situation that we're on. Okay, so as the um, as the slide suggests, we're going to talk about what to wear. Now, um, you may not have seen, but I've got a sort of blue pastel shirt on today. Uh, I like the idea of sort of plain backgrounds. This is um, this is just an example of something that that doesn't look great uh, when you wear it. Don't wear stripes. If you're a guy, don't wear stripes and anything. You know, obviously, um, the ladies out there as well. Anything that, that is 
that is striped, the camera doesn't like it. Um, this is probably a sort of high-end camera that you might get in a, um, in a studio, for instance, and we give the same advice to our people who were kind of media training for uh, going on television or radio or whatever, whatever it is. Um, but the fact is that look how, the look how the camera doesn't like it and look at all the different shapes and, 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 it, and it's a massive distraction for what should be all about your message, what you're saying, you know, the importance of your, of, of your delivery, whatever that is. It could be also a, a very garish tie that doesn't, that doesn't work very well. Um, so, you know, there is a general rule that you, you kind of opt for plain shirts or outfits when you're uh, presenting online. I like pastel colors. I think they work. I wouldn't use, I wouldn't wear white if I can avoid it because there's no kind of um, definition to it. So avoid white. Green can tend to drain the, 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 um, the, the, the light out of, your, out of your face a little bit. And also they say don't wear green because the green screen thing you can fade into the background on some TV sets, but that's not, uh, that's not really um, um, something that we can do at the moment. Um, just wanted to go back just a fraction there because this is quite important. When I said, look in the mirror, if you do, then you'll see yourself. You know, you can preview yourself when you're doing any of these uh, sort of Zoom presentations and all that, um, and check what's in the background, every, everything else, and check what you're wearing, obviously. And this could be something about, you know, maybe in normal life you have a you have an earring. Um, it could be, you know, a guy could have an earring, or uh, it might be that you don't want to wear your earrings when you when you're in front of your um, uh, your clients meeting. So yeah, anything like that, the fact that you maybe haven't done your hair or you maybe don't want to wear glasses because you feel you look better without them. I normally wear glasses, but I don't for this because I'm so close to the camera. I don't uh, sort of need, need, need to. So all those things need thinking about as well. It may be you cut yourself shaving. So you need to need to look at yourself before you actually, um, uh, go to that, um, go to that, next next point where you're actually on air or in the, in in the public eye so let's just move on to this guy now story attached to this guy is that um i mentioned about my university work and my students booked a uh, an interview through the football association with this guy who's head of tournament delivery for euro 2020 which we know isn't happening this year it's now happening next year but you'd expect him to be sort of fairly smart, wouldn't you? And that kind of thing. And this is how he turned up. He turned up in this Gantt top. Um, and what this is effectively doing is branding that company and not the one that he's actually representing. So be very careful. <coughs> and this is about how you brand yourself, really. Just, just make sure you look the way you, your, your clients need you to look. Um, look look right for the for the occasion and it may change whatever you know the different sort of people it may change for when you're talking to your staff as to when you're talking to uh, clients and potential clients so just be aware of it now this is something that i've just collate, collated some some pictures here they're only going to be on for about 10 seconds each but what the point i want to make with this is that i watched bbc television um, television news. Uh, I think it was uh, I think it was breakfast news, but I can't remember exactly which one. But I was only watching for about ten to twelve minutes, and these were all images that I picked up in that time. So I've said when Zoom goes wrong, this could be Skype, it could be FaceTime, it could be Microsoft Teams, it could be any platform at all. But these are really good. You know, some good lessons in all of these, and I'll go through them as we go. So this guy. He's looking down, so he's looking down at, the, he is actually looking at the camera, which is good, but he's looking down. And that gives a slightly condescending look when you look down on anyone. It's just almost like na naturally, ooh, a bit off-putting. He was actually a very nice guy. But people are getting it wrong every day. And look at the books behind him as well. It might be that those books are probably more identifiable on HD than they would be on this screenshot here. And you'd be looking at his books and saying to yourself, well, 
um, or making a judgment on him on the basis of what he reads. It's a distraction from what he's saying. And obviously it's a bit of a messy background that anyway. So uh, personally, I don't, I don't like that. Um, I don't think that really works for him. He's a professional guy, looks good apart from that, but gets it wrong. So let's see the next, um, the next version of this. Now, this lady, I've got a lot to say about her. Um, let me just move it on again. Here we go. Now, this lady works for the World Health Organization, as you can uh, see from the banner behind. She'll be doing this all the time. This kind of presentation will be happening all the time. And yet the banner that she's got does not fit the screen, the wide screen that we have and we have to be aware of when we do these uh, kind of um, presenting online. So what you've got, you've got the kind of door on one side, you've got the messing, messy filing cabinet on the other side, maybe things there that she wouldn't want people to see. But, you know, it's just basic stuff. Why is it that she's getting that wrong when she should know a little bit better? But this is all on BBC National News. She should know that. She should be aware of that. And you know, I, I don't understand why that kind of thing happens so often. This is another one. This is, uh, this is someone else who uh, isn't looking through the camera. She's looking down at the person she's talking to or herself. Again, that's not a good look. Not bad head and shoulders, but no headroom. This is an interesting one. Uh, Catherine Granger, she's um, the head of UK Sport, but she doesn't look to me like the head of UK Sport who's talking about a, a serious subject like the, the lockdown during COVID-19. It's not really the kind of look. She hasn't really uh, sorted her hair out. She's an extremely professional person who's done brilliant interviews in the past for me and lots of other people uh, at the BBC, but not really the look. And look at the messy sort of cupboard, the, the cupboards behind. That to me is not a professional kind of look that you would expect from uh, someone like uh, Catherine Granger, uh, as good as she no doubt was in the interview. This is someone who isn't talking about fitness videos or, or um, the, you know, attendance at gyms. This is someone who just hasn't done her hair. She's got a plant growing out of her head and she's in her, um, her gym gear. So she hasn't thought about it. And also it's not the best background. And this is someone obviously who's got it completely wrong, looking in the wrong place, um, far too close to the camera, um, such that there's a sort of psychedelic thing going on there as well. And unfortunately, I'm zooming in here, which I uh, hadn't uh, really planned. It looks even worse. OK, this is something else. Uh, this is a student of mine, actually. He's a, he's a good lad. He's um, fronted one of the videos that, that they've done in lockdown. And I'm really proud of them generally because they've they produced um, eight TV shows and four radio shows during lockdown. So it, it's brilliant. But we got a couple of these, and this is just one example. This is the curse of the high back chair, which uh, makes you look like uh, you're kind of uh, managing the Starship Enterprise or something like that, but it doesn't work. So make sure the chair behind you, make sure that chair behind you is, is low, uh, low backed because you're only gonna be in the head and shoulders and just make sure that it's a clean background as well. He's looking down slightly. So we're seeing that kind of messy light fitting and the, uh, and, and the bedstead and the, and the, uh, and the what, shower curtain it looks like, but it's probably just, um, just his curtains. But yeah, just another example of how people are getting it wrong every day. I'm trying to teach my students um, uh, good practice, but this is just something where, you know, occasionally uh, it goes wrong. A lot of the stuff he did do was okay. So we'll let him off and he'll probably get quite a decent mark for it anyway. So that's um, poor old, um, that's poor old Josh Hardy. Okay, let's talk about framing for success then. So this is, um, I've been alluded to a lot of these things as I've gone. And uh, so we want to get into the actual framing of yourself. Just getting it right. Now, you'll see what a difference that is. That's me pre-COVID um, pre haircut. Um, and you can see that I have the screen, as I have today, directly opposite my eyes. That's the way. You need to get the camera lens, wherever it is, whether it's a laptop, whether it's a, a computer, get it level with your lens. Adjust your chair height 
if, if you're not. I've got a stack of books here, got a stack of books on which this laptop is sat. Um, one of which is the Chronicle of the 20th Century, which is lovely and thick, which means I don't I only have to have about seven books. I've got one or two James Patterson uh, uh, books as well. But, you know, you can't see that. It's just it's just to make sure that I'm, I'm level with the screen. And there's you see that room there as well. You see the room at the top of the head. That is ideal. It's obviously it doesn't need to be quite as high uh, with the haircut that I've got today. Um, but uh, it's. It, it's the kind of look that you should have. No real distractions behind either. That's another important thing. Okay, it's a printer, there's a laminator there, there's, there's one or two books which you can't read, and there's a door which is secure, but it's a clean background which shouldn't distract from the kind of thing that I am uh, saying. Um, unlikely to, anyway. Let's, uh, let's just uh, leave it at that. So there are a few examples of me um, uh, not maybe doing the right thing. Um, I'll just move it on a fraction. Here we go. So that is not a good look because like that lady that you saw in the picture on BBC News, they're looking, I don't know, was I looking at myself? Was I looking at the person I was talking to? It's not a good look anyway. You don't look at your best. And the idea here is that you look absolutely at your best when you're representing your company, when you're representing your business, where you're representing yourself. So that's not an ideal look at all um, and even though you know and also there's there's not really enough room on the on the chin there and here's another example now this is the same kind of pose also I look very very worried and I there's obviously uh, the, the money from the um, uh, from the, uh, the business hasn't gone in again or something like that but look how I'm cut off as well at the uh, at the head. So again, that framing needs to be right, just sort of sort of 10 millimeters or something just above the head. So you frame properly, head and shoulders, and you, 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 and you can work on all this before you actually go live on any of these, uh, these kind of things. So. so what I want is for this, for you, when you're setting up your, your own um, interviews uh, or interviews or or chats with people, um, official uh, discussions with clients, is make it what I call a level playing field. So get the camera lens level with your eyes. That will give you the best perspective and it's an even, you know, you're, you're, you're working on an even keel with both, uh, both you and them. They will appreciate that. Um, and actually, you know, that they should be encouraged to do this as well. So if you've got staff, <coughs> excuse me, if they've got staff, you should encourage them to do exactly the same thing because you want them to look at their best when they're representing your company possibly. The camera can lie, it does very often, um, if it's all at the wrong angle. But let's just say it doesn't look at your best. If, if this camera lens was an underneath me rather than above me, so no looking down here, this is a less common one, but this is, um, th this is below me looking up. You can see the ceiling, which is actually clear, but it could be cluttered with all sorts. It could have a really messy light fitting, for instance. Um, and look at the chicken neck there. I mean, I'm trying to disguise it today, but uh, the chicken neck is not good either. Um, you know, you can tell I'm advancing towards uh, 60, can't you? the way things are. Uh, so yeah, that's not a good look. That doesn't make me look at, at my best and it wouldn't be representative of Capricorn Media or you can think of it yourself. So this is another one where I'm kind of looking up and you can actually see the screen looking down at the messy cushion, which keeps the door open when I, I'm not trying to keep people out. It shows all my, um, all my books, all my reading, um, maybe in each HD you might be able to read those and there's a footstool there, but it's all very, very messy, not good. And also it's cut me off um, at, at the head, at my, um, at my worry lines. So again, that's not an ideal look, and that's really not what you want to do. So lots of presenter do's and don'ts there, um, uh, Colin, and I'm sure that that has prompted a few discussions. Um, so let me stop sharing and come back to you. 
Right, thanks very much, Robin. That's really interesting and uh, lots of ideas and suggestions. Uh, I was tempted to go away and change my shirt whilst you were doing your presentation. <laughs> yeah, they are strobing a little bit, Colin, I have to be yeah. honest. Yeah I, must, yeah, I must admit, as soon as you said that, I thought, oh, strike a shirt. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, the other thing which, um, obviously the difference between, I, I know you're used to it, for example, if you're doing television broadcasting, but the difference for a lot of us is that we're used to going to meetings where we're talking to people or we're used to standing up and talking in front of the group. The big thing we're missing out on with Zoom is the, um, the feedback from the, from the audience. And I'm talking about non-verbal feedback. So, you know, if you're standing up and talking in front of 10 people and talking in front of 100 people, you've got a sense of what, how, how you're being received by the non-verbal communications from yep. the audience. And of course, we're, missing, we're totally missing out on that when we're doing these Zoom um, presentations. I don't know if you've got any comments or uh, tips in terms of how- Yeah, to, I agree. I mean, that. you know, personally, I, I feel that I feed off an audience as well. And, and that's possibly because I'm in that business and, and I'm experienced in, in doing that kind of thing. And anyone who kind of likes speech making will, will understand what that means, that you can, can actually feed off off that positivity but of course there can be negativity as well and they may all you never know Colin they might all be groaning in the background saying oh god how much longer is this going on um, so we don't get a sense of that when we when we're doing this but I think it's just what what I'm talking about is just controlling the things that you're in charge of and um, and there's lots you know there's the the look and the sound are the two things that, that, that you're in charge of and you can really uh, make a difference and present in as a professional way as you possibly can. And then it's all about what you're saying then. And, and you, you've kind of, what I always say is that when you get the look and the sound right, you've earned the right to be heard. And, and that's a kind of mantra that I use for all my training because it's, uh, you know, anything involving communication that, that, that has always um, stood me in good stead. Okay, good. Just to remind the, uh, the viewers now, if you've got any questions, please do hit the Q&A button um, and type in your question and I'll be able to read it out to Robin and see what he's got to say about that. Um, also, I noticed, Robin, that obviously your presentation was primarily uh, slides of you talking over the slides. Have you got any tips in terms of, uh, for example, when we watch the news, sometimes you'll see the reporter, sometimes you'll see background film and then you'll flick back to the reporter. Have you got any tips about how to mix between the two or whether you should just stay on one for a few minutes or whether you should flip between the two? Any, any ideas? Yeah, on that? I mean, I, I, um, I mean, I deliberately thought about the number of slides I'd used today and I, I got lots of kind of, you know, I'd had lots of screenshots that I'd collected just recently. So I thought I'd throw those in as well. Um, and uh, I actually worked very recently doing a, a presenting online um, recorded uh, session, something like what I've just done there. Um, I think the whole thing was about 23 minutes. So it wasn't just about um, the do's and don'ts. It was about the, um, uh, the laws of communication, more detail on that. I also have something called uh, um, uh, simple first impressions, which goes into a lot more detail about making a good Good first impression I've kind of summarized it there but yeah that the, the I work with the uh, insurance company very new new on the block insurance company who are trying to get their name out there and trying to make an impact and that was that was quite an interesting uh, project because you had you know some of it you had to be face to face for but they did want a few slides as well because I think if you're doing 30 minutes like I've just done, and I have done this before, you know, doing 30 minutes just talking to people, you know, attention span is not, uh, it's not easy, you know, that. so I think to have something else to focus on as I, as I had there, I think is really useful. So, a, a, you know, a nice tight number of slides. I mean, I've, I've aimed for about 15, maybe 16, 17 minutes there. I had, a, it was actually done in video format, but I stopped it occasionally just, mm -hmm. um, when I had a bit more to say, but you can do that. I've done that with um, with a uh, PowerPoint slides. I also use Keynote on this uh, on this Apple Mac system as well. So I think you you yeah. And and one thing um, one thing I've I've noticed is that and one thing I'm kind of fairly experienced on now because of my university teaching is that you don't put too much on a slide. In fact, that the majority of the slide should be a picture really. Um, it should be a picture and just bullet points, words or bullet points. That's all I would I would advocate. And then that becomes automatically 
a script for you. So you don't actually have to write what you're saying. You just react to what you're reading because you know your business better than anyone else. And you just react to those specific, you know, bullet points, phrases uh, that uh, you got. And of course, when you're presenting online in this, uh, in this way, you kind of have notes as well. Um, you know, I'm fairly uh, practiced in this, so I didn't need that, but you know, whatever, whatever suits you. Yeah, so as you say, the uh, I, we didn't differentiate initially in the question about the difference between uh, putting words on the screen and putting pictures on the screen. Words on the screen, as you say, should very much be bullet points where you're just using them to hammer home a few key points and then you pad that out with what you're talking about. Sure. Um, and as you said in your very first slide about the power of um, the visual um, taking on board information, you can't beat a picture in terms of giving people a, 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 bit, a no. message. And you, no, you can't. You demonstrate that very well. The, 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 the various pictures you use of people yeah well, and, and, and it, how to look. It, it, it's it was amazing to me i know actually colin i mean that the, there are some people who are online now who may have seen my linkedin video it's only i think it's eight and a half minutes and it's a kind of shortened version of what i've what i've done there with um uh, with everyone um and it's got like more than 700 views in the space of four days which i was amazed about but i think there are so many people doing this now um that they they you know, it's a really, it feels like a really hot topic. And mm. we think we know, you know, we've, we've, we've practiced with it and we know, we know how to use it, but there's, there's really a lot, you know, as I said on the, on the screen with those pictures earlier, there's a lot of people getting it wrong. And when it's happening on national radio, na sorry, national TV, as it was, um, it, it, it's extraordinary to me that, that no one is coaching these guys before they actually are put to air. So well, can you move back a bit or could you go, just go in the center of the screen? Can you move your screen down? You know, just basic stuff like that because it looks messy and it looks horrible. Yeah, exactly. So uh, also someone asking us about, you talked about the background and the, uh, yeah. obviously we can see quite clearly you're in your sort of home office in which people would expect at this time. Someone else has said, is it, is it a good idea just have a completely plain background or is it quite personal? Is it personal to have a, a little bit of a background to show show a bit of your personality or does it depend i guess on what sort of interview it is to well so interestingly much. enough um i've had one or two arguments with my other half about um about this picture that's behind me it's actually a very yeah. bland picture of um of uh, the the smack out uh, uh, south end way i think it is and it, it's fairly innocuous and everything else but i've kind of left it up and for those videos that I did for the insurance company I took it down because I wanted something a bit more bland I think it's for people to decide and I think if they're using Microsoft Teams as an example you can blur the background there and this is something I wanted to talk about if you're using Skype um, just have a look at if you do Skype just have a look at what it looks like when you blur the background it looks really effective and you can cover up a few um, a few issues that, that there might be behind by blurring the background. Now on Zoom, as we are today, I can't do that. I haven't found a way on Zoom I can actually blur the background. You can have those superimposed backgrounds, um, but uh, my computer I don't think is quite modern enough. I mean, it's only a year and a half old, but it says it hasn't got the capacity to, um, to, to be able to do this. But um, we all, I think a lot of us are aware of like when people do the weather, that's not really a, a map behind them. It's all on a green screen and they have a monitor that they're working with. I've got a green wall that I actually could use as a green screen and superimpose an image behind me. We, we had considered, um, because I was teaching remotely for my university students, putting Wembley Stadium behind. Thought, well, that'd be nice. That'll make them feel at home. But in the end, I think for people who are watching this, I think it's far more important that you're just, it's a kind of friendly, um, friendly sort of relaxed tone. As long as there are no distractions behind, no specifics that, that are going to get in the way of what they're saying, that would be my, my guide. But you can check all this before you, before you, uh, before you go live in any, any discussion. It's quite interesting, actually, Rob, because I, I know I was talking to you early on when we started about when, when, when I connect with someone on Zoom, one of the first things I tend to look at, if, if I know the person already, rather than looking at the face, because I already know, I tend to look at the background. And we are getting a lot of questions about background actually coming up on the screen here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, someone said to me, Robin, you mentioned about books behind you. Why is it that many interviewees have their bookcases behind them, from Matt Hancock to Ordinary Joe Soaps? Yeah. Uh, I mean, is it just the fact that we happen to be in an office where we happen to have books, or is it? do you think it is more to it than that? Um, I, I think sometimes they think it's a it's a just a good a good idea and and maybe 
you know, it's their library or, you know, I mean, I see a lot of politicians posing in front of big, big, um, um, with loads of bookshelves and that kind of thing. But all it says to me, it's just a cluttered background, which is a, a distraction because you are picking out those individual books and you've got to be very careful. If you're close to that background as well, they can read it. I mean, these ones just over my, my finger here that, that I'm pointing to, they're actually, I actually tried to sell them on eBay. They're all Beano books and, uh, and, and, and really quite old. I mean, they are worth, worth some money, but although I didn't seem to do very well with it, um, mm. but you can't really see those. But ideally, if I was doing a kind of business presentation, I wouldn't want them in vision. Um, it, it might be okay to have, you know, I've got lots of business books, which uh, it's, it's fine to have. Uh, have those there and if it were that guy who was talking about North Korea and South Korea well it's absolutely fine that he maybe has a lot of history books or something like that behind him so it can work but my own feeling is that um, bland is better um, but even you know it still can feel like it can still feel like home or feel like a sort of professional office environment. Mm, okay and as you say of course it's not it's uh, what, what really uh, displays wherever your professional is is what you're wearing that's that's one of the the, the key factors isn't it which you mentioned yeah. in the video about how, how much you're what you're yeah, wearing I, I i expected a few questions on this as well i mean the 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 the, the kind of i mean the, the sun is just started streaming through so it's actually gone gone a little bit on the shiny side here but just those those kind of plain pastel colors do work much better i would avoid green because simply because if you do end up in a TV studio down the line as well, um, you could blend in with a background um, if, uh, if it, you know, depending on what kind of uh, studio setup they've got. But I would avoid white because it's not really, it doesn't, doesn't show up as well. And just have the, you know, I've got a, I've got a, uh, a pink shirt, you know, sort of pastel green shirt would be fine actually, but you know, maybe, maybe a sort of dark gray or uh, whatever, whatever. I, I like, I like blues as well. Um, I just think you don't want it to, you can't have it too busy. And when you start throwing in stripes and throwing in sort of um, ties that, uh, that strobe in the, in the camera lens as well, then that, that's when, again, it's a, just a basic distraction. And even more questions about the Zoom and, and about the background. Someone's mentioned about the fact you can have a, uh, you can choose your background on Zoom. Like there are some yeah. sort of, I think, I think the Golden Gate Bridge, that sort of thing. Yes. Um, yeah or virtual backgrounds. Do you think they're a good idea or do you think they're a little bit sort of... Uh... Well, I, I don't really like them. And obviously they, they would probably use these um, for news output because they want to give the impression that they are, um, they are you know, in that, in that place. So it's a definitive, well, they're reporting from Sydney uh, for the Sydney Harbour Bridge or Golden Gate Bridge or whatever. whatever. But generally, no, I, think, I think at the level that we're talking, when, when we're talking talking business I, I you know I think just organize your background yourself I think you can you can obviously dress a background and I have I have done here I mean um, interestingly I'm going to just turn the screen here Colin I didn't get this in because I thought uh, maybe some Ipswich fans out there or some fans of other clubs or someone who wanted to tease me on the fact that um, um, that probably we're going to get relegated anyway um, and you know goes without saying that I'm an Orange City fan um, and that's up there but I wouldn't get that in with a presentation like this because it, it's not it's not really appropriate but if I'm doing you know I'm talking to my students for instance and it's a sports football course then fine it's uh, that's that's no problem so there are there are, there are different backgrounds that will be useful for different audiences and yeah. part of the the challenge I think Colin is knowing your audience it, it's yes, understanding your audience yeah and actual fact that that uh, little swivel there of your camera threw up a couple of questions for me. Uh, one of them actually yeah. someone's already asked, which I haven't got around to asking you. Yeah. Um, and that's about uh, in photography, uh, stroke videography, it's best to use a rule of thirds. Um, is it better on the Zoom call to centre yourself in front of a camera? And I noticed yeah. when you did the swivel, you straight away went over to one side of the screen. Yeah. It did create a totally different impression, actually. Yeah, no, absolutely right. And, and this is, I mean, the rule of thirds, someone has uh, obviously been... Um, uh, uh, reading some of my powerpoints I did for students but yeah that this is um this is the the theory that let me let me just uh, adjust this if I'm talking to if I'm talking to um yeah actually this will be the wrong the wrong camera lens but let's say I'm talking to um a reporter 
just where just where my hand is here, Colin. Yes. That would be fine. So my head is in that in that left hand third. That would absolutely make 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 sense if I was talking to them. But remember who you're talking to. Your audience is here at this little lens here. That's where the audience is. So that's who you talk to. You're talking to the reporter who's talking to you because it's just good conversation and you're, you're discussing with them. And they're kind of, you know, it's just the way generally interviews are done. Some interviews, obviously, you do talk directly to camera. You know, I mean, that, that happens as well, particularly out on location when, the, like in TV news, you're asked to uh, talk to the presenter in the studio. You will, you, you will be talking directly to a camera, which isn't an easy thing. I mean, some say you should imagine that the lens is your, um, is your, uh, is your proud mum or, or your partner or your, I don't know, your first child or whatever it is. I never found that really well. I just, you know, I found it a bit distracting. So I just, um, um, yeah, I, th I think you, you, you just need, and, and, you know, one other thing about, about this is, if I was kind of staring at that all the time in this kind of fashion, it would be quite off-putting. It's a bit scary. It's a bit, you know, it, it makes you feel about uncomfortable. So occasionally I will kind of look away. I'll just break that stare and come back, keep on coming back. Just a couple of seconds and then I'll keep on coming back because that, you know, gives you that variety that the viewer... But it's also what you'd be doing in real life, isn't it? Because in real life you wouldn't be staring at someone, you'd be sort of... Of course it is. Of course it is. And, and if you can yeah. mirror that that kind of chat that maybe we we have at a Chamber of Commerce um, networking meeting, Colin, you know, if you kind of mirror that kind of style, then that's actually absolutely right. We don't want yes. it too formal, do we? Yeah. And the other question is, which you prompted when you scribbled your camera around and we saw the uh, Caro <laughs> Rose sign, it now. Was, uh, <laughs> yeah, was the, the use of humour in the presentations. Um, how relevant is that and how important is that? And is yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've always or... said that that's really, really important. And it's almost like another subject, really. But I think uh, in terms of, you know, if you're writing speeches or you, you're, you're preparing a, uh, something for your, um, uh, for your staff, um, then I really, I really think it's it, it's important. And I'm not a you know I'm not a joke teller in any way at, at, at all. But you know with a with a smile with a I, I, what I like to do is feed off things that are happening topically as well. Things that are happening in the news. It might be just related to um, to something that happened because you got you got caught in a rainstorm or. Um, it, it, it could be, it could be anything that's happened on the way to you know on your on your last shopping trip or 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 when you went to the park or whatever but i like to include those things because it it, it brings that sense of humanity to mm. a presentation you don't want yeah. to be <coughs> too formal because uh, you know I, I think it turns it turns people off and you know hopefully the kind of uh, the atmosphere that i i create around these kind of um training sessions um you know make people feel accessible and you know feel that yeah those know, sort of things really them. really help you build rapport with your audience doesn't it if you do that sort of thing mm. yeah um i've got one also about the uh the light i mean you mentioned the light briefly yeah. in terms of the sun this question here is i have a sun streaming into my office first thing in the morning so i have to close the blinds is it worth investing in a light over the computer to help light me up well what what i what i really like i mean don't, you know clearly if the sun's coming directly through that's not going to look good and it's going to distract distract you but available light behind the behind the lens is really important. If you can get some available light, um, if it's really not possible, um, the person that's asked this question, if it's really not possible to, um, to move elsewhere in that room so that they're in a place where the, where the light's behind but the, the sun isn't uh, sort of streaming in, then that, that, would, be, uh, that would be ideal. Because I think it would be a shame to, to lock out that, that uh, natural light. Natural light, is the best light that you can have. Obviously, I have lights in here which I which I can use. And these these screens actually for for laptops generally are pretty good. They're, they'll they'll brighten you up a bit, and you can tweak them and all that. But everyone looks at their best when there's um, when there's sort of good. It's nice and bright outside. Um, the the light is at this state at this side of the the house is um, is fading a little bit now. Well, it's not fading, but the, the the sun has gone around the other side of the house. So there's no kind of sunshine as such, which uh, means that I'm slightly darker than uh, probably I was uh, at the start. 
Yeah, um, just one final question on uh, appearance. Um, someone said they used to wear a suit and tie, um, and as I've aged, their client base has become younger, so no one appears to wear suits for everyday work anymore. Uh, it appears that good jeans and an open shirt uh, are the way to go. Do you have any views on this in terms of what to wear? Um, I know you I, said earlier about know your audience. I guess that's one factor, isn't it? Yeah, I think you've got to know your audience. You've got to know your clients. And it may differ for the different clients as well. That You might be someone who's really laid back. It might be a sort of, uh, I don't know, say you're, um, let, let's say you work for a financial uh, you're a financial advisor and you've got one client who's a who's an old farmer who um you know um you know, obviously dresses the way they dress so you dress down for someone like them possibly or dress more country maybe um but when it comes to i don't know your your high flyer from the city it might be that you you want to change the way you look but generally if you're in a kind of office environment like this i would i would say you know this kind of look i wouldn't say don't don't go the extra mile with the with the other added button um with the second button i wouldn't say that 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 works but i think just the top button un undone it's a it's still a professional look um but as i say i don't think you can have a hard and fast rule on this i think it depends right. on your audience and you know your audience you people that are listening today you know your audience better than anyone does so yeah. gauge it and, it and it may differ for different people okay good uh slightly different uh tack on this one uh to do with zoom meetings more than webinars uh, it says robin what tips do you have for how to get in involved in a multi-user zoom event like networking where lots of people may be trying to speak at once and obviously if you're in a room in, in real life a real life meeting you tend to get a, you get a sort of feeling about who's about to talk and it does tend to be easier but if you're on a zoom event it can be difficult to know you know when to talk you don't want to interrupt on the other hand you want to make sure you get you get your point in and similarly if you're if you're chairing a meeting like that it can be difficult sometimes to see i know that we've got this sort of the raised hands thing but uh, do you have any other tips on how to uh, interact with other people on a multi-user zoom event it, it's really difficult. I think on, on Microsoft Teams, they have this system where you can go into little um, sub rooms, um, which, is, uh, which actually um, struck me in my training as quite a good idea that you can have that you can actually put sort of three or four people in and they can all they can all talk, talk together. But I know we've had we've done quizzes here at, at, at home, you know, to keep in touch with uh, other members of the family. And we're kind of talking over each other a lot. Uh, there's a there's a lot of that going on. You know, my my screen lights up when I talk. Um, your screen lights up when you talk. And obviously, if you've got five or six people, um, everyone's kind of vying for um, supremacy sometimes. So it can be difficult when you've got lots and lots of people in the room. And you probably experienced this uh, probably more than me, Colin, because you're organising, you know, the these um these meetings for the for the chamber aren't you which where, where you might get a hundred people you know um, signing up and um uh I, I guess you have to have someone leading it and controlling it and uh and maybe bringing bringing people in I, i'm not sure if i know the answer to that um i think probably more by trial and error i would i would govern how that's going to Gonna, gonna go but generally I, I don't like it. I like small groups and certainly I train sort of five or six people is fine but I think when you get too many more it becomes um, it becomes difficult yeah okay good well thanks very much Robin I think you've covered an awful lot in this afternoon's uh, session and uh, as far as I can see we've answered uh, pretty much all the questions which people have been posing um, just a couple of uh, ones to wrap it up a couple of people are asking about um, your videos being available but as i said the the whole the whole broadcast will be available on youtube anyway so if anyone wants to see the video uh and then i can obviously see it again on youtube to uh to go yeah. through the details and i would again. recommend uh, colin if if uh, if you don't mind i'll just say that that linkedin video which is eight and a half minutes um is online uh, it's online now under my under my name and uh you can you know you can uh, just have a have a look at that and um and obviously i'd be delighted if um if you guys uh, reshare it as well, because uh, you know the more people uh, see it, obviously it's better better for um, for me personally. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that's under your on your LinkedIn page, Robin. Yeah, Bailey. sure. And yeah, uh, yeah and by all means, anyone watching today, please um, please connect. It'd be nice mm. to um, uh, nice to see the name behind uh, behind the uh, well, the face behind the name, possibly. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, one one I just squeeze in one more question, which is uh, 
uh, quite relevant, I think. Any tips for using Zoom, et cetera, on a mobile phone, or would you always recommend using a laptop? Uh, no, not necessarily. I mean, I think mobile, uh, I think smartphones are very good. What I would do, though, is I would get one of these little portable, I've got, I've got a couple here, because um, we, we do smartphone filming for, for our students as well. A couple of, um, you can buy very cheaply on Amazon, you can, you can get uh, these little uh, uh, tripods. That they yeah. that they screw into with the with the thing that holds the, the the phone as well, with the cradle I should I should say, very very good and and you know we've done we we've had chats and and and, and done that you know both proper meetings and uh, and sort of private private ones with family and they work really well but, but make sure that when you do your mobile phone I've got mine here that it's actually like that and not like that because this mirrors the way that the, the kind of screen that we're looking at that we're working with all the time so have it in landscape not in portrait that reminds me of my uh, my yoga class actually i'm doing a yoga class online and the teacher has a mobile phone in portrait and I've, i'm watching on my tv in uh, in landscape it's very frustrating I'm, have a word with her and get it yeah, get, yeah tell her to get a little there's a lot of empty break. space at the top of her screen yeah yeah okay good well thanks very much robin really appreciate your um your time this afternoon Pleasure. i'm just going to flash up your uh, email address on this screen just in case anyone's got any uh uh, questions which they want to send through to you on yeah on I'd, space, I'd love people to contact me if they got any further questions maybe if they, they had questions that didn't get answered or or they've got any specifics or obviously I'd, I'd love to um, I'd love to work with more uh, more chamber members anyway uh, I have only rejoined the chamber this um, um, this year actually Colin as you know and we got we got to two meetings and then we were locked down weren't we so um, so yeah those um, those Friday yeah, welcome meetings, back. Um, yeah. I'm missing yeah. actually um, so I, I probably need to interact a little bit more with the uh, with the online stuff don't I yeah do yeah yeah we could hear from you um, so just one final thing before we wrap up this afternoon I just like to uh, let everyone know about our next uh, webinar which is coming up on uh, Friday morning and uh, that's an interesting one. Probably the timing is very, very good, actually. Uh, social distancing in the office. And uh, there's been a lot of talk about us moving back to uh, the office and various businesses opening up again and uh, working out how to keep you two meters in the office. What about shared access staircases, toilets, kitchens, uh, all sorts of things, uh, shared printers. Uh, Lisa Blicks, this from Axiom Design Associates. Well, that's their speciality. They specialize actually in office designs, uh, which they've done for many years. And so they're the perfect people to uh, uh, talk to us about how to uh, bear in mind all those factors when we do uh, move back into the office. So that's on Friday, this coming Friday at 9.30 a.m. Uh, as always, if you could uh, sign up for it, you'll find the details uh, on the uh, Chamber of Commerce website. And uh, we will obviously be sending out um, a mail shot about it as well. And uh, just to flag up next Tuesday and next Friday, we've got some more uh, webinars next week as well coming up. And uh, if you do have a subject which you'd like us to talk about, then uh, do let us know. Or if you think you've got a subject which you'd like to talk to our audience about, then again, do let us know. So uh, one other final webinar just to mention to you, uh, we've got the uh, our MP for Brentwood, Alex Burkhart, has very kindly agreed to join the Chamber of Commerce uh, next Thursday. That's not this week, Thursday next week, the 21st of May at four o'clock for a question and answer webinar uh, for around about an hour or so. He's gonna be answering your questions uh, in relating primarily obviously to the government and how they're handling COVID-19 uh, and indeed uh, any questions you've got relating to the, uh, the current situations uh, regarding how your business is faring during the, uh, the current crisis. So that's next Thursday, 21st of May at 4 p.m. Again, do register. Uh, it's available to book on the Chamber of Commerce website. So all that remains really is to me to say thanks very much, Robin, for uh, your time this afternoon. We really appreciate it. And uh, thanks, I'm Colin. sure um, uh, everyone else would like to uh, join me in thanking you for that. And uh, to all of you watching this afternoon, thanks very much for joining us. And we hope to see you again on Friday morning and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.